I'm good? All right. Praise the Lord. Get that thing out of my face. Amen. Actually, the Bible says no man doeth good. That does include the preacher. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, praise the Lord. If you would take your Bibles over to Genesis chapter number 6 with me. Genesis chapter number 6. We looked at Proverbs chapter number 4 last Sunday evening, verses 20 to 27. I kind of continue the thought about the heart today. And we talked about keeping your heart, amen. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. You know, recently I worked on my car and I replaced a bunch of parts on it, thinking that it was the right parts. Spent quite a bit of money on those parts. Spent a whole day replacing those parts. And it didn't fix anything. But I will say the parts look really good on there. (laughs) And you know, the reason is, is because I did not understand how something is working on that car. There is something missing on my understanding how it works. And so the noises that I heard, I thought were something else, and I was wrong about it. And you know, there's a lot of times in our lives and in the lives of people that they are trying to fix things in their lives, but they have a misunderstanding on how things work. And when we get the idea that... We can trust our heart. We find ourselves in the world of hurt. And we're trying to do something. We're trying to fix something. We're trying to, to be successful in life. And we think the answer is that to follow your heart. But the bottom line is, is this right here. That will end you in trouble every single time. And so as we look at this, Genesis chapter number 6, look at verse number 5 with me if you would please. The Bible says in verse number 5, And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his what? Heart was only evil what? Continually. And so as we look at this, we see this. We see in this passage, the thoughts of mankind, their thoughts are evil continually. And they were so evil at this time in the history of the world that it actually caused God to repent of him making mankind in the earth. I mean, that's pretty bad when God himself says, man, I wish I hadn't made man. (laughs) Look at this. It says, and it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And so as we look at this, we see this, you know, we've got to understand our heart. We've got to have a good grasp of of our heart, how it works, why it works. And we've got to recognize the simple fact of the matter is, is that ticker in your chest cannot be trusted. It can be trusted to lead your paths. And so as we look at this, we see this. Turn over to uh, Genesis chapter number eight with me. Genesis chapter number eight. I want you to see another verse. Look with me at verse number 21. It grieved God in his heart. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. Oh, Noah's given an offering. And the Lord said where? In his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's what? Heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. So when we look at, at verse uh, uh, 5 in chapter number 6, this path that had come to the place where all the thoughts of man continually was evil. It was wickedness, the thoughts of his heart. We get over to chapter number 8, verse number 21. The Lord says here in this passage, he said, from the time a person is young, their heart, the imagination of their heart is evil. It's evil. This is what it is. Now, let me ask you this question. In the, this is probably right around, you know, maybe five, 6,000 years ago. 
uh, uh, has things changed in the heart of mankind? Are they still born in sin just like they always have been? Are you with me? And so as we look at this, you can't trust your heart, amen. You better be careful not to follow your heart. Oh, but I love her. Well, you better find out about her before you love her, amen. I love him. He's so handsome. You better find out about that rascal before you give your heart to that guy. Are you with me? And I'm telling you something right now. Your heart will lead you wrong every time. That's why God wants to give you somebody to help direct. Praise be to God for God and his word. And praise be to God for godly people in your life that will help direct you out of trouble in your life. Amen. I being one of them. Hallelujah. Brother Devin being another one. Amen. Mrs. Frost being one. Many of the adults in this room, no doubt about it, I can definitely give an amen to them helping you. Amen. Hallelujah. And we should be helping each other. And so as we look at this, we see this. Listen, we got to know our heart. Amen. Let's look at this truth. Amen. Go over to Jeremiah chapter number 17. I like this passage. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right. Now, Marie, make sure you're paying attention back there. Amen. This is for you. I preach in this message just for you, girl. This is all about you right here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's for each one of us. We all need a reminder. Can I get a witness? And so Marie, being, I believe, the only teenager in this room, can I get a witness? I'm asking Marie to give me a witness, amen. Hallelujah. Okay, I'll take the smile. That'll work. And so anyways, as we look at this, chapter number 17, look at verse number 9. Verse number 9 of chapter number 17 of Jeremiah. The heart is, say it with me, above how many things? And desperately wicked, who can know it? Now that statement... That's kind of tough, isn't it? That's a tough statement to, to say. And listen, but you know, the truth of the matter is, is you can't get help until you're admitting or willing to admit the problem. Until a person's willing to admit that even my heart is desperately wicked. It's deceitful above what? All things. Until I'm willing to admit that. Until I'm willing to admit to myself that even a Pastor James Robertson Frost the first, amen, has got a wicked heart. And if I let my heart run things, I'm going to find myself in trouble. I'm going to find myself in a problem. And it doesn't, listen, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't, listen, it doesn't matter what degree you have behind your name. It doesn't matter what your last name is and what family you came from. Can I get a witness? Amen. The bottom line is, is whether saved or lost, if you let your heart have control, you're in trouble. Simple as that. And the reason is, is because the Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things. Now, let me ask you, the, would you agree with me that the heart is the seat of the emotions? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. When you're feeling stuff, you're feeling it here. When you get angry, it's up in here. When you feel like somebody is breaking your heart, they're breaking your heart. Amen. Listen, the bottom line is, is our heart is where the seed of our emotions are. And if you don't realize that if you don't let, emo listen, you can't let emotions rule you. Can I get a witness? Because if you let emotions rule you, listen, have you ever been emotional in your life? Ever, ever been emotional, out of control emotionally? Maybe a little bit, maybe even just a little bit, just a, just a little bit, everybody, yeah, maybe, yeah, me too, amen. I've allowed my emotions to get out of control. And so the heart is untruthful. We see this matter, definition of deceit, literally a catching or ensnaring, hence the misleading of a person, the leading of another person to believe what is false or not to believe what is true, and thus to ensnare him Fraud, fallacy, cheat, any declaration, artifice, or practice which misleads another or causes him to believe what is false. Literally catching or ensnaring, hence the misleading of a person. And your heart will mislead you. Your heart will deceive you. Are you with me? The heart is, listen, it's deceitful above how many things? 
all things. It is deceitful above all things. So we see the definition and we see the depth. Hey, listen, it is, it is, it is deceitful. There is nothing more deceitful than your heart. Did you get that? Nothing more. It says all things. It doesn't say some things. It says more deceitful than anything else. Listen, before you have to worry about the devil deceiving you, you have to worry about your own heart deceiving you. Did you get that? Before you have to, and is the devil not deceitful? It says above all things. That is intense. That is, that is above all things. Is the devil a part of all things? Yeah. yeah. Deceitful above all things. You need to be more worried about your heart than you do the devil deceiving you. Can I get a witness? Listen, and that is why I'm so thankful that we got a God who loves us. Amen. I'm glad we got a God who cares. Ecclesiastes chapter number nine, verse number three, the Bible says, this is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event unto all. Yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil. Did you get that? The heart of the sons of men is full of evil and madness is in their heart. Ecclesiastes, listen to that. Ecclesiastes, listen, go there. Ecclesiastes 9, I want you to see it, amen. Go there, look at it. You should underline this. You should mark it in your Bible. You should memorize it. I should never trust my emotions. Can I get a witness? Trust truth. Ecclesiastes chapter number Nine, look at verse number three. Look at it in your Bibles. And if you if you're you know if you like to, to cross-reference and stuff like that, it'd be good to put Jeremiah chapter number uh, 17, verse number nine next to it. And the same with uh, Jeremiah 17, 9, to be able to connect those two. If you're looking to show somebody and at some point in time you want to show somebody what the Bible says about this, it's always good to do those cross-references. And uh, topics and whatnot. You know what I used to do when I was a young Christian? Uh, one of my first Bibles, I did in the back, you know, they have a few blank pages. I would take a topic, I'd write the topic in there, and as I heard preaching and I heard a verse about that topic, I would throw that verse in there and put just a, a little bit of the context of what the verse was saying. And then that way, if I, somebody was asking me a question or something along those lines, I could go to the back of my Bible and I could say, okay, heart, deceitful, and go to those verses. Are you with me? Until I actually learned it to the point where I could now just flip through there and, and find these things. And so uh, 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 Ecclesiastes chapter number nine, look at verse number three. And it says, this is an evil among all things that are under the sun, that there is one event unto all. Yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil. And madness is in their heart. How long? While they live. Are you with me? Do you think King David was a saved man? Do you think it was kind of crazy for the king to steal another man's wife, get her pregnant, and then try to cover it up by murder? Do you think maybe there was some madness where? In here. You want to know why? Because he wasn't thinking by truth and being led by the Spirit. Because you know the Spirit of God never lead him to do something stupid like that. Are you with me? But it was from his heart. And so as we look at this and we see this, he's like, well, I'll fix this and get myself out of trouble. I'll kill him. And I'll have Joab do it for me. Well, that's dumber than two boxes of rocks because now you've involved other people in your craziness. Not only that, the fact that he involved his servants said, go get her. Are you with me? And you think they're going to be quiet about it. Yeah, right. Amen. Can I get a witness? He was full of madness. And we can see all kinds of other people. It's like the Apostle Paul and the book of Acts, where we talked about just a couple of weeks ago, how he goes back to Jerusalem. The Holy Spirit tells him, I think it's three different times through three different people, don't go to Jerusalem. 
don't go to Jerusalem. And the apostle Paul does it anyways in Acts chapter number 21. What's he end up doing? He ends up shaving his head for the purification of the Jews out of the Old Testament. He ends up in the temple with some three other Jews, and then he ends up getting arrested because he's going through purification, which basically is saying that Jesus's blood wasn't enough to wash away his sins. Do you think maybe he got a little sidetracked because of his love for the Jews and he let his love, his heart, lead him in the wrong direction instead of obeying truth in the Spirit of God? Are you with me? And this is what happens in our lives. We let our hearts lead because our hearts get full of madness while we live. And listen, it can happen to anybody. And that's why you should never, ever, ever make decisions emotionally and in the moment of a situation are you with me when your emotions are high and your emotions are flustered because of something it is never a good idea to make a decision until you've had a time to step back examine apply truth and then make a decision and sometimes you need to call your preacher and say, preacher, this is what's going on. My emotions are all over the place. What do you think? I'd be like, run. <laughs> run! <laughs> and so as we look at this, we see this. Listen, that means your heart is more deceitful than the devil himself. It's more deceitful than, listen, the most deceitful person you've ever met. Are you with me? Yep. Your heart is. Because your heart, I guarantee you, has deceived you more in this life than anything else ever has. Are you with me? And so the heart is untruthful. But not only is the heart untruthful, the heart is also ungodly. Let's look back at Jeremiah, if you would please. Jeremiah chapter number 17. It says, uh, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately what? Wicked. Amen. It is wicked. It is ungodly. Definition of the word wicked, evil in principle or practice, deviating from the divine law, addicted to vice, sinful, immoral. The heart is deceitful above all things and what? Desperately wicked. Are you with me? Now listen to this once again addicted to vice. This is what the definition of wicked is. Addicted to vice, sinful, immoral, desperately wicked. Your heart is addicted to vice, sinful, and immoral. Are you with me? You say, well, that's not my heart. Oh, you are in trouble. You need me to pray for you. Let me know. And so anyways, wait, I already do. And so anyways, look at this now. It's desperately wicked. It is so bad. Wicked means it's all of those things. This is a word of comprehensive significance, extending to everything that is contrary to the moral law and both to persons and actions. It basically means this is cursed. Your heart has a problem. Listen to this. The heart is ungodly. Not only do we see the definition of wicked, but we see the depth of it. It's desperately wicked. And that means in a desperate manner, as in despair, hence furiously, with rage, madly, without regard to danger or safety, as the troops fought desperately, in a popular sense, greatly, extremely, violently without regard to safety. That's part of what this word desperate means. When somebody is desperate, man, they go to great extremes. Are you with me? When they become desperate. We read stories about, you know, there was that uh, plane crash that I think it was a soccer team in, uh, in the... Alive. Yeah. Argentina. Yeah, Argentina, the mountains. Of, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, 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 what's the name of those? Andes, the Andes Mountains. And they crashed, and they begin to eat a human's body to survive. Are you with? That's desperate. Are you with me? It's called cannibalism. I mean, that's bad. People, when in desperate situations, will do things that they would never, ever imagine doing. And that's the word God used to describe the wickedness of your heart. 
desperate. Genesis chapter number 6, verses 5 and 6, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Are you with me? Genesis, and we've seen in Genesis 8, 21, and we also seen that verse, the imagination of a heart is evil from his youth. Ecclesiastes chapter number 8, verse number 11, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore, and we looked at this verse the other day, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Because execution doesn't happen, judgment doesn't happen immediately when people do wrong. Their heart is set in them to do evil. Are you with me? And man, that's a scary thing. We get away with it, we get away with it, we think we get away with it. And we think we get away with it. But God sees everything. God knows everything. And as a result of that, it just gets easier and easier as the longer we go without judgment. But thank God, God is merciful, amen. amen. But the bottom line is judgment will come for those things. There is always a price. And so as we look at this, the heart is untruthful, it's ungodly. And thirdly, the heart is unknowable. Look at verse number 9 of our text once again. Who can know it? That's the question. Well, the truth of the matter is... That is the reason why so many times we don't think our heart is so deceptive and wicked. Amen? That's right, because the Bible says, who can know it? And the answer to that, what we'll look at in a minute, well, praise the God, there is an answer. There's an answer for us that believe. Amen. Thank God for that. But the bottom line is we look at this, who can know it? Well, there's only really one, and that's the God of heaven. It's unknowable to us unknowable that cannot be known, unconceivable, unfathomable beyond the ability to know. Even though this says this, it is hard for us to grasp how wicked and how deceptive our own heart really is. We really don't see it. Let's just be honest about it. I really don't see my, my heart as being that bad. But the bottom line is, is someday when I stand before God and he turns on the light bulb, your heart is what caused you to do this over here. You know you shouldn't have done. It's what caused you to do this. It's what led you over here. It's what caused you heartache over here because of your heart. And we just don't know it. We just don't know it. And we cannot know it. But what we better do is we better just believe what God says. We better believe what the Bible says about it. We better trust God about it. And boy, I'll tell you what, when we ever get in the place where our emotions are stirred and we're allowing our heart to lead us, man, we better be careful. We better pull back and get some counsel. We better get some, ask some advice before we allow our hearts to cause us to do what we should not do. The heart is unknowable. We see the definition unknowable and the depth. What does it mean? Well, it's unknowable. That's pretty deep, amen. It cannot be known. Knowing that we can't trust our own heart because it is untruthful and ungodly. Knowing that we cannot know our own heart because it is unknowable. One would possibly save themselves. What's the use? There's no hope. Praise God, there's hope, amen. I'm thankful just because we can't know it then the bottom line is, as we can see here, God can know it. That's right. The last thing I want you to see is the heart is searchable. Look at verse number 10. I, the Lord, search the what? Heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his what? Doings. God searches the heart. God tries the reins. He's the one that is going to give man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. You see, when God judges and God gives out that judgment and judgment is given and people have to pay their judgment, they have to pay for what they've done. It's not just about an actual action. It's the heart behind it that God judges. Are you with me? Because sometimes people, two people can do two of the same, same exact thing. But their position of their heart in doing it is totally different. Are you with me? 
just like we had some folks standing out there holding signs today for, for hopefully the Lord. Their heart was because they want to please the Lord. Hopefully that is the reason each and every one of us were out there. But there's a chance that some of us may have been out there because they were more concerned about what somebody else out there may have thought of them. Are you with me? So their heart about it is not the same as somebody else's heart about it. Amen? And so, and that's the truth of it. So when we look at this, we see this, it's unknowable, but praise God, the heart is searchable. 1 Samuel chapter number 16, verse number 7. Go ahead and go there. 1 Samuel 16, verse number 7. I want you to see this. 1 Samuel 16, verse number 7. And you know this passage, this is where David's being chosen to be king, to be anointed. And he's got, I believe, six other brothers, right? That passed before Samuel, and the Lord denies each and every one of them. Seven of his sons, seven of them. So David's the eighth, the youngest. He's number eight, new beginnings, amen. And so as we look at this, we see this. In this passage, look at verse number 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his what? Because I have refused him. Talking about the first. Samuel said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before me. He's seen this big, tall guy like Saul was, and he's like, This must be the king. Uh, no, Samuel. This guy's heart is all messed up. You don't want him to be king. Look at what it says. And it says, Because I have refused him, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the what? God's looking at the heart. God wants to see what, what's going on in somebody's heart. He wants to see somebody. Now David, he was a man after God's own heart. It does not say that David had a heart after God. David was after God's heart. Are you with me? He knew his heart wasn't right. So he chased after the heart of God. On, now look at this. Is searchable. God can search our heart. Go over to Psalm chapter number 44 with me. Psalm chapter number 44. I want you to see these verses. Psalm chapter number 44. You must understand the condition of your own heart. You've got to understand the condition of your own heart. You know, I've heard uh, some people preach out of Ezekiel that God gives man a new heart when they get saved. I'm thinking that's probably a bad interpretation of that passage. Because that is the army of Israel being raised from the dead. Are you with me? And it says he gave them a new heart. And people take that passage and say that when we get saved, we get a new heart. No, we get a spirit, amen. That's right. Ain't nothing new about this old corrupt heart because I have found this old corrupt heart still leads me wrong if I let it. Amen. And so what do we have in us? We have a spirit. And so, and we better let our spirit by the spirit of God lead us. And so as we look at this, God can search our heart. Psalm chapter number 44, look at verse number 21. Verse number 21. Shall not God search this out? For he knoweth the secrets of the what? Heart. He knows the secrets of the heart. He knows the most secret thing that's in your heart. You cannot hide anything from our God. Can I get a witness? God can search our heart, not just a little bit, but the entire depth of your heart. God can search it. And God can know our hearts. The passage talks about how he searches, he knows. And so look at verse Kings. Go to first Kings with me. First Kings. Once you see chapter number eight of First Kings. 
First <clears throat> Kings in your Bibles. And there, like I mentioned last week, there are so many passages and references to the heart in the Word of God. There is tons in this. Our heart does think. Our heart does have imaginations. Are you with me? First Kings chapter number 8, look at verse number 39. Verse number 39 of 1 Kings chapter number 8, the Bible says, Then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive, and do, and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou what? Knowest. Knowest. He doesn't just search the heart, but he knows the heart. For thou, even thou only, knowest even thou what? Even thou what? So who can search the heart? Who can know the heart? Only God can. Amen. Amen. For thou, even thou only, knowest the hearts of all the children of who? Men. Men. Now, is everybody that's ever been born, except for Jesus, but he still had a heavenly father, amen, the children of men? Yes. Yes. We all had to have a dad. Can I get a witness? A father. Somebody that, that uh, we came from. And so as we look at this, we see this. God cannot just search our heart, but he can know our heart. Now we'll go to Psalm 139. So what do we do? Psalm 139. Simple, basic, but really truthfully profound and vitally important for our understanding. You've got to know this about your own heart. You've got to allow the truth of the Word of God to guide your life and not your emotions, not your heart. You've got to let this book be in charge because there's plenty of times. Listen, how many times we, I'm just, I just feel like buying this? And you ain't, got two more, you ain't got two pennies to rub together, but you sure do have a piece of plastic that's got quite the limit on it. And you know what's getting you to buy that? It's called your heart. It's those emotions out of control. Are you with me? Some of you ladies are looking like you want to stab me right now. And, you, and some of you are looking like, man, I'm glad my husband's not here. <laughs> Listen, I'm telling you right now, we have got to understand our heart and we've got to get a grasp on this thing because we do make decisions based on the way we feel emotionally, which is being stirred by our hearts. We cannot allow this to happen. We must allow God to search and try us. We must put together a plan. When I'm getting ready to do something irresponsibly or my emotions are high, you need to have a plan in place, an action that causes you to step away from that situation, contact somebody that will bring you back down to even ground. Amen? And bring you back into balance and allow for you to to get some counsel. Are you with me? Psalm 139, look at verse number, the last couple of verses there. Verse number 23. This is what David did. This is what David learned to do, I should say, just like we've got to learn to do it. He says here in this passage, he says, search me, O what? And know my what? Heart. Search me, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. He wants God to examine him and help him. And in verse number 24, he doesn't just ask God, just check me out, Lord, search me so you know me, and then go about his business. He then goes on to say in verse number 24, and see if there be what? Any wicked way in me, and then do what? Lead me in the way everlasting. Lead me in the way everlasting. Search me, know me, try me, lead me. We've been there and done this before, amen? Search me, try me, know me, and lead me. 
if you're going to keep your heart, if you're going to protect yourself from bad decisions, you've got to understand this thing right here. And you've got to let God search, try, and know you and lead you. And he's given us a few things. The first thing he's given us is when you get saved, what dwells inside of you? The Holy Spirit of God. He leads, guides, and directs us. He prompts us. He works in our hearts and lives. He does. Are you with me? And then not only has he given us that, but he's also given us his word. word. The word of God. Listen, when your emotions are leading you to do something contrary to the word of God that you know, and you know it, it is not of God. It is your flesh. It is your emotions. It's your heart trying to deceive you. Are you with me? And then he's also given you spiritual leaders in your life, people that will help and counsel and guide and direct you that you need to be accountable to. Everybody in this room needs accountability. And I said everybody. We all need accountability. We all need somebody to be accountable to. Are you with me? And listen, you know, I talked about this morning how that Timothy submitted to Paul and was, had something, he was circumcised. He didn't have to be, but according to the law, the law very clearly taught that he didn't need to. The Bible taught that he didn't need to. Now listen to me. Listen to what I'm saying. If you have a pastor that is trying to dictate in your life, listen, I'm not going to come to your house and try to keep you accountable if you don't want me to. Amen? If you want me to help you stay accountable, I'll help you stay accountable. Pastor, can you call me up and make sure that I'm, I'm on my way to church? Or can you? Sure, no problem. I can set an, I figured out some tech stuff. I can auto text you. Amen? And trust me, I would do it. And so listen, the bottom line is this right here. It's accountability, and accountability is good. It is a really good thing to be accountable to one another because we will help each other. The thing about it is, is we're too prideful. And the truth of the matter is, is when it comes down to it, I, we had a, I went to a men's prayer advance when I was in North Carolina. It was in Virginia, and... Uh, they set up, you need to have accountability partners and all this other stuff. And I came back fired up. And they set me up with, I think they set, set me up. And so they set me up with a guy who was just, he was an older man. And he did not want any accountability. And I was like, great, man, you're my accountability. I was so excited. I was happy. I was young and very naive. And, and so anyways, and, and I came in, and that first time we seen each other after the advance, we were at church together at a men's prayer meeting. And I said, so, did you read your Bible today, brother? And he's like, who do you think you're, what do you think? I was like, oh. <laughs> Uh, 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 so I, uh, I was all over my side. I didn't even know what to say, amen. I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> and so do you see what I'm saying? And well, why? Because he didn't obviously, obviously he did not read his Bible that day. <laughs> and so he didn't like me asking about it. And so are you with me? And so what do we do? Well, we ask God to search, to know, to try, and to lead. What do we do? We set up a plan of accountability in our lives. We set up a plan of action. Listen, the bottom line is, is knowing disinformation is absolutely useless if you don't apply it. Are you with me? And that's the simple truth of it. The simple truth is, is a lot of what I teach is, 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 is practice. It's put it into practice. And, and I'm big on preaching that stuff. Listen, there's a lot of knowledge that comes out and information and things that we need to know that come out when I preach. But my main emphasis, almost every service puts you in a place to decide what you're going to do with this information. Because we need to be challenged. Last I checked, Christianity isn't getting stronger. Last I checked, our society isn't having revival with Jesus Christ. And a big part of that is, is because we will not be accountable to one another. Because we will not, God search me, try me. Before we go and make those decisions that are going to be harmful to our future, to our relationship with God, we don't make ourselves accountable. And boy, the truth of the matter is, 
is that old man, that pride, it just fights with us. It just fights with us. And we get that attitude, who are you to tell me? Well, I could show you in the Bible what it says about who I am and what it says about who God is. And on the authority of God, I share the word of God with you. Amen. And so listen, you have somebody that's trying to dictate to you, listen, I am not going to force myself in your life. I'm not going to. I'm not going to chase you down and make you crazy. Amen. I'll let somebody else do that. And so, Devin, sick him. No. <laughs> but listen, listen, the, the bottom line is this right here. I love you. I'll be as involved in your life as you want me to be. And I try to gauge that. Are you with me? And so praise be to God. Everyone standing, every head bowed, every eye closed. That heart, you've got to understand that. If you're going to keep your heart, you better understand your heart. You better understand that your heart is deceitful above all things. And that it is desperately wicked. And we don't even know. We just don't know about our heart. But boy, God sure can. Does. He can search. He can know. He knows the details. And he's given us a book that I don't care what the situation is. He has put principles in here that apply to every single situation of life. I have never had anybody bring something past me that there was not some passage of Scripture that would apply principally to those situations. Now, there may have been some times I'm like, well, let's look into the Scriptures on this. I'm going to need to search this out a little bit, but I'll get you an answer. Are you with me? And so as we look at this and we see this, I am telling you right now, God wants to be in control. You know, we look over in, in uh, Luke chapter number 24, when Jesus walked with those disciples in the way, it says there, are, did not our hearts burn within us? And there is a big difference about emotions out of control and Holy Spirit walking with us, heart burning. Are you with me? And so there's a difference. And so when you're walking with God and that Holy Spirit's working, listen, that's a good thing. You can trust that. But when you have emotions that are leading you to do things that are not good, then you're in trouble. And you better back out and put that plan into action. Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for your goodness and your grace. Thank you for all that you do for us. I pray you'd work and move in our hearts and lives. I thank you for the wonderful word of God. Thank you for the wonderful information you've given us about our hearts. Thank you for loving us so much and caring to share that information with us and then also showing us what we can do about it. Father, I pray you'd help us. Help us to have a plan of action. Help us to not allow our hearts to run out of control, but help us to keep our hearts that we might have not these issues that can destroy a life. We love you. We praise you. We thank you. Work and move as only you can. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If God spoke to your heart tonight, would you slip your hand up as a testimony to heaven? God sees those hands. If God spoke to you, you come on. Piano's playing. You come on. Let God have his way. Take some time. Talk to the Lord. <clears throat>